This video will discuss a simplified representation of the Fock operator that we can use moving forward in Hartree Fock theory. So we start off with our Fock operator as some one electron operator acting on electron one in spin orbital chi a. And the one electron terms, of course, being the kinetic energy of electron one and its attraction to all of the nuclei in whatever system we have, plus a sum over all of the uh, Coulomb and exchange operators, so sum for all of the occupied spin orbitals that are not the current uh, spin orbital that our electron is in, of uh, the Coulomb operator minus the exchange operator uh, for each of those spin orbitals. And this is going to be equal to the orbital energy of spin orbital A times the same spin orbital chi A back. And we mentioned that this is not actually an eigenvalue problem, but it is a pseudo eigenvalue problem because this Coulomb and exchange potential, or our mean field potential, depends on what all of the other spin orbitals are. It depends on electron 1, 2, a minus 1, a plus 1, all the way up to n. It depends on what every other spin orbital is, not just what spin orbital a is. So that's why this is a pseudo-eigenvalue problem, which is going to be non-linear in nature. All right, so to help us get some more simplified notation here, we're going to describe a new operator. I'm using this kind of cursive script P here to represent what I'm calling a permutation operator. So whenever I see this cursive script P here, this permutation operator, is going to serve to exchange uh, the labels 1 and 2 whenever it has this subscript 1 and 2 here. So the two labels in the subscript are going to exchange which spin orbitals uh, our particular electrons are going to be in that follow after that operator. So for example, if we have the 1-2 permutation operator acting on electron 1 in spin orbital 1 and electron 2 in spin orbital 2, then the result would be that now electron 1 is in spin orbital 2 and electron 2 is in spin orbital 1. Okay, so then looking in terms of our exchange operator, our exchange operator for spin orbital b, if that is acting on an electron in spin orbital a, as we have described up here, then that is going to equal the integral over all the coordinates of electron 2 of chi star b, uh, 1 over r1 to permutation operator, of AB of uh, chi B, spin orbital B, for uh, both of those being for electron two. And then over to the right, then it's acting on spin orbital A for electron one. So this is, this is going to be the, we're gonna take these two spin orbitals here that follow after this permutation operator, and we're going to exchange A and B. So for here we see spin orbital B, so that becomes an A. And here we see spin orbital A, and that becomes a B. Just the exchange, uh, the permutation operator exchanging all those labels anywhere we see them to the right of the operator. Okay, so if we define our exchange operator in this kind of way, then we'll note that this is a similar kind of form to what we had for the Coulomb operator in the previous video. The Coulomb operator was complex conjugate of, of spin orbital B times spin orbital B, giving us the charge density of electron two in spin orbital B, uh, interacting with our electron one through the one over R12 uh, kind of cool, uh, uh, electrostatic inter interaction operator. All right, so then that would be acting on the same uh, electron one in spin orbital A, except for the exchange part, the exchange operator serves to swap these two labels. So here we can write it down in something that looks like our Coulomb operator, but is uh, actually going to be the exchange operator written in a very similar way. So when we do this, we can actually reformat our Fock operator to be written in the following way. We can write the Fock operator as um, acting on uh, coordinates of electron one as the one electron terms, kinetic energy plus all of the nuclear attraction terms plus a sum over all of the orbitals now. So note that we're gonna say b equals one to n. We're not going to have the restriction of b not equal to a anymore, and we'll see why shortly. So we're gonna do the integration over all of electron two's coordinates of chi star b, chi b, 
and 1 over R12 operator in the middle. But now we're going to get the Coulomb plus exchange part by doing 1, which is the Coulomb part, and then minus the exchange operator for AB, which is going to give us the negative exchange operator part. Okay, so that's an, that's an easier, uh, simpler way to write that down where we don't have to break it in terms of this restricted sum. We don't have to split up the Coulomb and exchange parts into different terms. We just include this 1 minus PAB permutation operator in there. Okay, so the question now becomes why are we able to do this such that we don't have to exclude A from the sum? So wouldn't the electron be interacting with itself if we include the interactions of it with something in spin orbital A? And the answer is actually no, <clears throat> and it's no for the following reason. So if we look at the exchange operator for spin orbital A, as will show up in one of these terms here, so the exchange operator for orbital A acting on spin orbital A is actually going to end up being equal to the Coulomb operator for orbital A acting on orbital A. Because if we have A in both cases here, then PAA is just going to exchange A for A. We're going to end up with the same term. So that means that our Coulomb and exchange terms are actually going to be the same. And since our Coulomb and exchange operators, when we're talking about the same spin orbital, are going to be the same, the difference of them is going to end up being zero. So when we have the Coulomb and exchange operators acting on a particular spin orbital, which is the spin orbital it's currently in, the result is going to be zero, and that's not going to have any effect on what our sum ends up being. So therefore, that means our sum can include A, and another reason why we might uh, use to indicate this fact is the fact that if we look at the two electron integral AAAA, where it's anti-symmetrized, um, we would note according to the physicist integral, uh, what we would do is exchange the A and the A here for the Coulomb versus exchange part of that integral. Um, it doesn't matter how we exchange them because they're both going to be the same when we subtract. So uh, the anti-symmetrized interaction of an electron in spin orbital A with itself is actually going to end up being zero because the exchange integral is going to perfectly and exactly cancel out the Coulomb integral for how those two interact. So this is how using determinants actually saves us and it enforces the Pauli exclusion principle, and that makes a, a lot simpler time for us uh, doing these sums where we don't have to worry about those restrictions and uh, which parts of the sum are included.